Hello everybody, my name's Captain Meatshield, and welcome to Chapter 3 of The Last Door. It's time to delve deeper with the mystery behind the story, so let's get right into it. All is darkness. All is cold. That's right, we got buried alive at the end of the last episode, didn't we? So... Just beat it in with your face, it'll be fine. All is silence. There we go. Made it out. Are you dead? Oh, this is very nice. Hello, this is wintry as fuck. Winter has come. Hello, old dude. That's a very cozy looking fire you have there. Jeremiah, we must talk. With your mother deceased, arrangements have been made regarding your upbringing. A man of my position and responsibility can't take the time to look after a young boy. Well, that's spot on parenting from you there. No single fathers in your age. First thing in the morning, you will depart for Scotland. I am sending you to study at the St. Gall Boarding School in Aberdeen. You need not bother to write, as I will not have time to read your letters. That's rather harsh. Miserable old bastard. Let's push on through this, then. Flashbacks. Oh, his arrival at the boarding school. Still no letters for you, Divit. Please do not persist any further. It seems like his dad completely cut him off. That would really suck. So we're getting a bit more of a look into Jeremiah's past now. How he came to be at the boarding school, by the looks of things. Pleased to meet you, my new classmates. And who is that? Him? Oh, that's just a fit. Pay him no mind. He is a little odd. Interesting. Is that Anthony? Hello, I'm Anthony. Anthony Beechworth. This is my first term here. I've only just arrived. I hope we can be friends. Oh, that's nice. The beginning of a fond friendship. Oh, right. Okay, we're back here. Wherever here is... What... What is happening? Very good question. I mean, you got stuffed in a coffin. A shiver runs down my spine when I look at what could have been my eternal deathbed. Yeah, it's a serious phobia for a lot of people. A serious fear is being buried alive. I'm not particularly fond on the idea myself. My head is pounding. I feel so weak and thirsty. If I don't drink water soon, I will faint. Dear Lord, where am I? Yeah, let's see if we can find that out. There's not exactly much to go on here. It looks like we're in some sort of underground basement or something. Let's have a poke about and see if we can find anything. There's, there's nothing here that I can click on. Nothing to inspect. What is it? Wait, what's this? I wonder how it got in my pocket. A ticket to see a play called The Four Witnesses. One of whom has had their face scratched off. Is that in reference to Anthony being dead? I'm assuming so. Let's have a look outside. Yeah, that sounds like the world's saddest violin right there. I'm in a city. Is it Aberdeen? How could I have escaped? 
I don't think you escaped from anything. I think you got stuffed in a box and carted off to somewhere else. I can't see anything beyond this wall but the dark facades of the buildings on the far side. There are people. Cheapest potatoes in town. Young man, could you please tell me where I am? Apparently not. All right, then. I apologize for coming up and asking you a simple question. Please, sir, could you give me some water? This ain't charity, Toff. I only sell to paying customers, so cough up or get out. Rude. Well, even if I had money, I don't think I'd give you any custom now, so screw you, sir. There's a cart blocking the alley. I won't be able to pass until it has been moved. Never heard of climbing over things. Just trying to push them. Well, we appear to be in slums. There's a face up on that wall. That is a very happy window. Yeah, we appear to be in the slums of whatever city we're in. Everything is very run down. Everybody seems to be poor or homeless. Another vendor? Please, I need water. Get out of here, drunk. I'm not drunk. There is a man staring at me from amidst the crowd. Something in his countenance seems strange to me. It's probably the way he's dressed, he looks far too upper class for this sort of area. Let's go over and talk to him. Excuse me, sir. Sir! Sir! Well, fair. All right, let's talk to you then, lady. Please, ma'am, could you tell me where I am? You don't know where you're at? Why, this is the old Nickel Street Rockery. A darker, more decrepit place like there never was. But that's in London. How could I have arrived in this slum? So we are definitely not in Scotland anymore. So it's all going to be Cockney accents from here on out, all right? Walk around on my plates. Right, what can I see? From the pipe flows grimy water, full of soot. Well, I can go and pick something up from here. Oh, you're gonna drink it. Oh, that's not nice. I don't intend to drink it again. It had an awful taste. Yeah, I imagine it did, but if it's made you feel better. Then that's good, there's nothing else to do in here. Let's move on back. Oh dear, maybe not. Jeremiah! Night time! I must have fainted. It is dangerous to be in the old Nichols at night. I should make my way out as quickly as possible. Ooh, this is. Here. Right, there's nothing for me to be. Oh, that's foggy. Is there anything down this way that I can be checking? I'm not going to go back there. I don't think there was anything. What's down this way? Oh, flashbacks. That's what's down there. Herr Dr. Wakefield here is here to see you, mein Herr. Oh, we off in Germany now, are we? Show him in, Herz. Dr. Wakefield, that was a name that I remembered. It's about your patient, is it not? There is no trace of him. He hasn't shown up for his last sessions. I have been to his house, of course. His landlady assured me that he went on a trip weeks ago and hasn't come back home. He kept the destination to himself. Then it is happening as I feared. What do you mean? I am sorry, my dear friend. I first thought of this when you described your sessions with Herr de Witt, but I did not want to upset you without need, as I hoped for the best. Now I am afraid my suspicions could be true. 
There are some things that I will have to verify first, though. I promise that I will contact you as soon as I have learned anything important. Please, Herr Doctor, it is of the most utmost importance no one else know of this matter. You have my total discretion. Ooh, so there are other players in the mix. Chapter 3, The Four Witnesses. Let's get it on! I feel like I must have been walking these streets for hours. Surely I must be close to finding my way out of this... labyrinth. R.A.P. in peace, David Bowie. Yeah, plus the... like, wandering around London is... that can be a nightmare. I don't... if any of you have wandered around London, that place is a maze. What's up these steps? Hello? Do you hear them? It's the crows, searching for the moans of the weak and dying. They're calling to each other. They must have found something. These streets are so confusing to navigate. I'm afraid I have lost my way. Could you direct me out? Yes, lost one. I can give you direction. I have been gifted with the second sight. I can peer deep into your past and unwind the tapestry of your fate. Would you like me to close my eyes so that yours may be opened? You're a bit weird, but okay. Um, I haven't a penny to pay you. Money is of no matter here. Come close to me now. Ooh, tarot cards. What do we have? Do I get to flip them all, or do I just pick one? I'm going to go with... Bottom middle. The mask. Empty eyes stare at you, and a voiceless mouth calls you. Its lips twist and snarl with what it has seen, what is still to be seen. You think it is a stranger's face, but it is your own. That's nice. The scream. It begs you to escape. Mute, it shrieks your lost name. Sharp, painful, and burning. Its voice is one you know. dying star. You lost your guide. You follow the stream but do not know where it goes. You think you have escaped but actually you are getting closer and closer. It's all very foreboding. I don't understand. What does it all mean? I can't unpick these ends. The threads you have woven in destiny are too tight, child. But you will. Oh yes, you will. I can do no more. That is not for me to say, but for you to discover. Remember that in the fog, we see only what is closest to us. The bird remains in the distance. If you wish to leave, you must follow the path of bird. No more direction can I give. Pardon me, I must go. You will need a map to guide your steps. Farewell. Thank you for being so wonderfully cryptic. I'm gathering that the, the bird is playing a much larger role. No, it doesn't belong to anybody. You're welcome to take it if you like. I'm not sure what good it will do you without any oil, though. Cool. Right, we're starting to gather stuff. So, I now have a lamp. Oh, it's you. And... Uh, come back here! What's this? You may keep my miserable kingdom. You may keep my spike-encrusted jewels. Stay there as you will and stare into my eyes. I am a shadow's shadow, and will not disappoint. What's in here? Rats. Are there going to be rats? Not sure if that's a warning or an exclamation. I can't go down there without my lamp being lit. Can I open this? The gate is like shut. No. Okay. Let's go and follow that dude, see what he's up to. Glass is fogged over, but for a handprint left on the surface. Okay, is that like a Titanic thing? Are people getting freaky in there? I don't know. Will you just stop?
Okay, I can't see shit in here. No. Alright, I need to sort something out with this lamp then. Oh, I can't see a goddamn thing! Right. Okay, we need to find ourselves some oil. Oh, I've just looped all the way back round. Need to find some oil for this bloody lamp. Right. Um, we've got a window of a rundown house. No. Let's try this door. Ooh, that's open. Ugh, slaughterhouse. This is... Cuts of rancid meat lie discarded on the butcher's block. This is all kinds of lovely. What are these? Oh. Okay, we've got some sort of puzzle here. A metal plate is planted in the wall. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was a bolt hole. What's one of those? I don't know these old-timey fashion things. Ooh. Nailed it. Okay. What do we have in here? Rusted out drums. Empty. This looks like it might be oil. Bottle of gin. I can have that anyway. Let's get riggedy wrecked. Yes. Uh, no, no, nothing of interest here. Glass essentia. Liquids are poured into the top and then impurities are removed through a valve at the bottom. Okay. Oh, there's an empty bottle of gin. Right. Can I use you with that? No. Can't use you with anything. <laughs> right, well, we've got something. Starting to get some progress made. Gonna have to explore around a little bit more, I think. And already I am stuck. What is this? Patches of oil swirl on its surface. Okay, empty bottle. Yes. Right, okay, I need to go and filter the oil so that I can put it into the lamp. Excellent. I know what I'm doing! Oil floats on the surface. When I open the valve, I will drain the water until all of the water has been removed. That's it. I've extracted all the water. Just like that. I fill the lamp with oil. I hope it will be enough to last the night. As do I. Let's go and explore that dark and dingy household. What? Oh, don't tell me I've got to go and light the bloody thing first. Um, excuse me, ma'am, may I borrow your fire? Thank you. Here we go. Well, this is delightfully creepy. An old worn-out coat hangs on the rack. In one of its pockets is a pair of gloves. Yay, I got gloves. I can keep my hands warm when winter rolls around again. The picture has collapsed from the wall. And I can't check it, okay? This portrait of a gentleman with a distinct look seems vaguely familiar. Is it somebody you know? I don't know if I don't think I can go upstairs, so let's try this door. Okay, what's all this then? Mold covers the wood stacked in a shed. This looks like it might be an ominous look. The door is locked and I can't even move it. Right. Back inside. Let's try the upstairs. What's this? A bottle of Saint Emilion Grand Cru is covered with dust. Oh right, I can click on this. Um, more 
paintings. People in these games really like their portraits. Hello? That's right in my ear. Now my eyes focus in the gloom. I can see that the person sitting on the bed is an elderly woman. She's just dressed up as a young girl for some reason. She appears not to hear or see me from here. I will need to get closer if I am to explain myself. Excuse me, madam. I am exhausted. Father made me rehearse today for eight hours. By the end, the music wavered with his trembling hands. It's still a long time for the day of the show, but he insisted that everything must be perfect. One more song, he said over and over. Father got really mad at me, and he started to shout when, after many hours of rehearsal, I said that I wanted to get out and play a little bit more in the street. More and more he is obsessed with rehearsing, with concerts, with perfection. Am I not the one who earns the money to feed us? Am I not the one people come over from all over to see and admire? Is my name not the one printed on all the posters? My name. The dolls for sale at the theatre entrance. They have my likeness, my dress, and my beautiful hair. I should be the one who makes the decisions. One more song. Yes, one more. A last song for you, Papa. Hello, madam. No, I don't want to dance and sing anymore. It's enough for today. I want my lemonade. I want to play. Okay. You're meant to be elderly. Are you someone who's been robbed of their childhood? Actually, madam, I'm afraid I've never met you before. I don't know who you are. Ah, don't you recognize me? No, madam, I'm afraid I do not. I'm very sorry. Oh, no, no, not at all. It's fine. It's been a while since I last performed, I suppose. But don't you forget it. I'm the great little caddy, singer, dancer, the golden girl of London's music halls. I bet you are. Weird man. She's not a weird man, is she? I'm looking for a gentleman. He's well dressed with red hair. Do you know him? He led me to this place. Right, I see he's talking about the bloke he was following. Uh, I was confused that we had an 1800s cross-dresser wandering around dressed up as a little girl. Not that there's anything wrong with that. People can do what they like. Just confused to find it in pixels. No, father. I've been practicing the latest repertoire as you ordered. I have behaved very well today, haven't I? I want to get out of this place. Hide and seek! Oh, I do love games. I look, go to the fog when I want to get away. Daddy won't find me there, you see. In the fog, there are no faces. Yep, okay. <laughs> let's play! No, let's not. Oh, okay, bye. Now stand next to the fireplace and count to three. Sure. There is something amongst the embers. Okay, well, what do I do to go and... Oh, I stand here. One, two, three. What's the time, Mr. Wolf? You're not even hiding! You're rubbish at this! Oh, I think he's gone now. No! What? What's the time, Mr. Wolf? What's going on? Very confused. What's the time, Mr. Wolf? Oh, God! What the blaze has just happened? My head, it's pounding. And where did she go? I... Ooh. Oh, the pile of things on the floor after Caddy's disappearance. There is a mask. Let's have that then. Ooh, that's a bit broken. It's a porcelain mask. It broke when it fell. The distorted features. There's a grotesqueness to them. I don't like to look at it. And look underneath the mask. A photograph. So that's obviously her when she was in her youth, and 
doing all the performing stuff. It has a note. Little Catty Show. There is a girl lit up by a spotlight in a musical, singing to live piano. Is there anything else left for me to do in here? Let's check this wardrobe. Am I actually playing hide and seek with her? Wardrobe's locked. Right. Okay, so I can't get anything out of the fire. Can I use you to get stuff out of the fire? No. There's a weird looking face right there. Kinda cool. Looks like a couple of fish. Yeah, I, I can hear you, Chatty McLarferson. Why is there a person sized caged in the attic? Like the lyrics to a last to a song entitled "The Last Song for You," the verses are scrawled so poorly as to make them illegible. The piano is so dusty. I dare say it hasn't been played in years. I wonder if it still works. How? My question is, how did they get it in the attic? I mean, look that that hole there where the ladder is. This it's fucking tiny. You're not going to get a piano through that. What's in this? This cage must have housed a huge bird. Only a feather remains. Oh, okay. You can't reach the fe You can't reach the feather. You could just walk around to an angle where you can put your arm through, you know, and grab it. How did you get through boarding school? What's that? Let's topple that one. Oh. It's very reminiscent of Beechworth's house in the uh, chapter one. <laughs> Doorknob is missing. Okay. Sounds like what? Hi. Okay. It's abrupt. No, no, no! Did I not pray enough? Have I not written faithfully every last note you screwed into me? Middle C up to A, measure G up to C, tied F, second violin bar two, middle C up to A, double note E, G, C, no, this was supposed to be our masterpiece. Viola C up an octave and then up to G. What? What? Who do you think you are? You blind man. Can't you see that I'm creating the angel's voice? The work. C to A, an octave higher. A fragile voice flutters around the strobe. No, 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 no! And swallow your laugh at you. I, I lost it again. Are you all right, sir? My inspiration, too, is lost. Quite lost. In the fog, the notes moan. Just her. Okay, you seem a little bit tweaked. Who was she? Oh, beautiful Daphne. The best soloist that a composer could have. The voice of an angel. What made my music possible? She would stand there by the window. The window caressed the wind caressed her cheeks. It danced in her golden hair. Her dress glowed like an ember in the dusk sun. What happened to her? She was very delicate, like a flower in the desert, like a petal in the storm. The sickness it just swept her away. Her voice my God, her voice, it came from heaven. She was the angel of my music. The mausoleum outside the house. Is that where Daphne is buried? That's right. I have visited her many nights and have even slept beside her on the cold, wet stone floor. Okay, yeah, you're very tweaked. I'm following a man, though come to think of it, maybe he is following me. He has a red beard and wears a cape. I sometimes find this man too among my notes. I feel him close to me at times. Please, I need to get out of this place. You ask me for words, but words are betrayers. They're dirty. Music, just music remains beautiful, but it is a prisoner inside all of us. We must set it free. I can't help you now, not until my work is finished. My work is the important thing. She was my only inspiration. I must go. Let music and singing surround you, my man. I've got to be honest, that's something I can kind of agree with. I'm very much 
amusable chap myself, and I... I take this. Yes. Now, I've always enjoyed music. It's something that I feel that... It transcends language. There's no language... Well, music is its own language. You don't have any kind of lost in translation sort of stuff. And people can get their own impressions out of music as well, which is great. Right. I don't think there's anything left for me to be doing in here. Can I look at this score? No. Okay, I think I'm going to wrap this episode up here. Um, I apologise for splitting this chapter up into parts, but the last video I did on this, when I did chapter 2, was an absolute nightmare for me to put together. The camera footage was too large for Vegas to process, so it had to be split into two via Windows Movie Maker, which took hours, it took about two and a half hours just to split that footage up. And then once the video was completely put together, the whole hour long piece took four and a half hours to render. I'm not sitting through that again until I've got like a decent, you know, a much a better PC setup so that it can handle things in a much better fashion. So I'm gonna leave this episode off here and I'm gonna continue on as soon as I possibly can and go from there really. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll catch you all very very soon. It's Captain Meat Shield signing off. <laughs>